Well, I wish we'd started a few months ago, but like you said, the president wants a crisis. I mean, if we'd started last year working on trimming back spending, we could have avoided uh, raising the debt limit. But I think the situation we're in now where we're bumped up against the um, the deadline, uh, uh, we either uh, have to accept a whole lot of disruption or we've got to decide we're going to raise it or give the president a little more room, but it needs to be on the, America's terms or the president's terms. The president's terms, as you said, is to raise taxes so he can spend more money. Our terms have got to be this cut cap balance pledge. Uh, he isn't going to like it, and we won't get it unless we're willing to hold the line past August 2nd. But I, I think by the time you get to September, um, when when everyone's squirming a little bit, just like you saw in Minnesota, uh, I, I, the, if the only reason the president says he's having to cut government services is that he won't allow our budget to balance in the next 10 years, uh, Republicans can win that argument, but we're going to have to take that stand, and that's why I think you're going to see in the next few days Republicans in the House are going to cu- uh, pass a bill that we call cut cap balance. What it does is it gives the president an increase in the debt limit, but it's all contingent on real cuts this year, caps on spending every year for 10 years until our budget balances, and then a constitutional amendment to the state that would require us to balance our budget. And I'm convinced, Steve, regardless of who's in power, if we don't stop spending more than we're bringing in very quickly, we're going to bankrupt our country. So the worry about Standard & Poor's rating is small now compared to what it's going to be like when we really can't pay our bills sometime in the next year.